Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. That's the first thing that we can do every day if we want to not quench the Holy Spirit. Is we can just go out of our house every day and say, I, I want to be a blessing everywhere that I go. Uh, I'm going to go out as God's representative and I want to be good to people. We're talking this weekend about how wonderful the Holy Spirit is and just how not so good it is to grieve Him or to quench Him. The word quench would mean to hinder the flow of. And so we don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. And we see that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. So let's take a look at that. Do not quench, suppress, or subdue the Holy Spirit. But now let's back up to verse 15. Now we're going to look around that. Remember like we said before, you're going to look around the verse that's there. You're going to kind of see, okay, what are you really talking about? See that none of you repays another with evil for evil, but always aim to show kindness and seek to do good to one another and to everybody. So that's the first thing that we can do every day if we want to not quench the Holy Spirit, is we can just go out of our house every day and say, I, I want to be a blessing everywhere that I go. I, I'm going to go out as God's representative and I want to be good to people. Well, now... The Holy Ghost gets all over that. I mean, the dove can light and stay there. That's not pigeon religion. That's, that's the right stuff. Come on now. <laughs> Second thing here is he says, be happy in your faith. <laughs> you know, there's power in joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, you can get unhappy, but you cannot get unjoyed. Because joy is something that God gives you. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It's in you. And so he says, be happy how in your faith. Faith makes me happy. You know why faith makes me happy? Because I don't have to worry about stuff. I can trust God. I don't have to try to change the people in my life. I can pray for them and trust God. I don't have to worry about the world economy. I can trust God. Faith just makes me happy. I like believing. It's easier on me to believe than it is to not believe. So I've just decided to do it. Just be like a little child and say, I believe it. I believe it. Be happy in your faith and rejoice. Be glad-hearted when? Continually, always. Not just when I'm getting my way, but always. Next verse. Be unceasing in prayer, praying perseveringly. Now. That may sound overwhelming, so let me explain. Be unceasing in prayer basically to me just means pray your way through the day. And just so we don't make too much out of it, prayer is just simply talking to God. <laughs> I think sometimes we say prayer and all of a sudden people go. <laughs> because we get this image of being in some certain place in some certain posture and sounding very awesome and spiritual. It's just talking to God. Thank you, God. I love you. Help me. Show me what to do in this situation. Lord, I don't know what to do. God, I can't change this. I cast my care on you. I turn it over to you. Just very simply, lovingly, pray your way through the day. Keep your prayers simple, and you're going to enjoy them a whole lot more. Don't try to be too flowery. Sometimes we try to sound real pretty when we pray, and we just get lost in our own stuff and don't even know what we're saying anymore. <laughs> we're not even really talking to God anymore. We're just trying to impress ourselves. Isn't that the truth? Oh, thou most holiest, fatherest, loveliest, most wonderfulest, amazingliest. And Lord, help us if we ever have to pray in front of anybody, because then it's really hard to not try to sound eloquent and beautiful and amazing. I mean, I really just try to keep it as simple as I can. Matter of fact, I wrote a whole book on the power of simple prayer. What's the next verse now? Thank God in everything. Woohoo. No matter what the circumstances might be, be thankful and give thanks. For this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus, the revealer and the mediator of that will. Verse 19. And do not quench, suppress, or subdue the Holy Spirit. And verse 20. And do not spurn the gifts and utterances 
of the prophets. Now, this verse is also saying, don't make light of the gifts of the Spirit. And do you know how much hoopla we have in the body of Christ over the gifts of the Spirit? One denomination believes in them, another one doesn't. One says they went away with the early church, another one says, no, they didn't. One says tongues are of the devil, the other one says we should all speak in tongues. Let me tell you something that's kind of interesting. Do you know what? We are, we crave the supernatural, but at the same time, we're afraid of it. Do you know that you have a supernatural part of you and I have a supernatural part of me? The spiritual part of us is what we would call supernatural because it's not natural in that we can touch it and hold it. And I personally believe that we crave the spiritual and the supernatural. And I personally believe if the church doesn't provide it, that's when people get off and get in the ditch somewhere and get into stuff that they shouldn't be into. There's a part of us that knows that somehow we should be able to know things that we don't know. Why do you think people sit and spend money calling psychics all the time? They want to know something they don't know. Well, let me give you a little flash. Don't waste your money. If you just got money to, that you want to get rid of, send it to me and I'll tell you what God's saying. Man, I wish people would pay me a dollar a minute to talk to them. Lord have mercy. I could preach the gospel to the whole world a hundred times over if people would do that. I mean, isn't that ridiculous what people will pay to try to get a little information about their future? I know what my future is. God's got a good plan. Amen. He loves me. Jesus is coming back. I don't have to worry. I'm going to go to heaven and live forever. But you see, there is a part of us that wants to know that. Well, if we understand these gifts of the Spirit, the Bible plainly tells us that God will give us revelation. He'll give us words of knowledge and words of wisdom. If you hang out with God, when you need to know something that you don't know and God wants you to know it, He'll show you. If you're in a tight situation where you need more faith than what you feel like you have, God can give you a gift of faith. And all of a sudden, you, you got this super faith for this. You just don't understand it. You just, it's just there. I believe that Dave had a gift of faith concerning me, and I don't say that as a joke. I really believe that, that, that he had a gift. He believed because there was nothing he was looking at that would make him want to believe. <laughs> but he believed that God would change me. He believed that. And then I particularly am fond of the gift of discernment, discerning of spirits. Well, I tell you, there's some freaky people out there. And you can't just go by what people tell you and how they look and, oh, I want to be your best friend. I love you, bro. You're my best bud. And something in your gut is going, not, 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 not. Thank God for discernment. Hallelujah. So you can go read the list for yourself. There's other things, including the things that people like to fight over, like prophecy and healing and speaking in tongues and all that stuff. But, you know, if you want to argue with somebody, go argue with God. I don't have any time for it. It's like, it's in the book. We're not making it up. So. Well, Joyce, I just don't understand all that stuff. Well, I said last night, I don't understand electricity, but I used it this morning. I mean, I plugged in everything I could find. I had my phone plugged in. I had my computer plugged in. I had my flat iron plugged in. I had my curling iron plugged in. I had the lights plugged in. I don't understand it, but I'll go back and plug in again tonight. So, you know, <laughs> we may not understand all this power of the Holy Ghost and all these, these gifts, but let's just plug in anyway. I want to live plugged in. There's no power shortage in heaven. All we got to do is plug in. We need a greater sensitivity. So we're not grieving and quenching the Holy Spirit. Now, how we treat people is the measure of many, many things in our lives. You can learn so much about a person by how they treat other people. You can learn 
we can learn so much about ourselves by how we treat people. Pay attention to how you treat people. How I treat people is a measure of my character. Is my character godly or is it carnal and fleshly? How patient am I with the new clerk out in the store who doesn't seem to know what she's doing and even though I'm in a hurry, I have an opportunity to either represent God to her or just act like some impatient, like any other person out there, just give me what I want and I don't care what you're going through. How we treat people, I believe, is a clear guideline or a measuring rod of our spiritual maturity. The Bible says you will know them by their fruit. I believe that how we treat people is an easy measure of the depth of our love walk. Now let me just camp here for just a minute and say to you, that probably one of the most important things that we should pray about, study about, and take a good look at in our lives is our love walk. It's called a love walk because Jesus said we are to walk in love. And love is really in essence, when it comes right down to it, it's how we treat people. It's not just a word or a theory or some little thing we throw around. It's not just us patting each other in church and saying, oh, brother, I love you with the love of the Lord. <laughs> I mean, it's a real thing. It has fruit. You can see it. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is humble. Love always believes the best. Love never gives up. Love doesn't have to be right. Love doesn't demand its own way. Love is not selfish and self-centered. Love is something that we can see. The God kind of love is unconditional. People don't have to earn it or buy it or deserve it or behave any certain way to get it. It just is. And that's what attracts us to Jesus. Because he just takes us the way we are and loves us into wholeness. And that's what we need to offer the world. But we have to focus on walking in love. I wrote a book about three years ago called The Love Revolution, and it was the worst selling book that I've ever had so far. <laughs> My books sell pretty good, and that one just stunk. <laughs> just did not sell good. But I don't intend to shut up about it, so I brought it here again today. <laughs> there it is. And I thought, well, if you can't take it in pages full, I'll do it in devotion. So I've got, a, I've got a devotional called Love Out Loud, and it's just like 300 little 65 little snippets about love. Maybe you can't take a whole chapter at once, so how about just a couple of sentences about getting over yourself and loving somebody? <laughs> you know, like, anyway. I believe that our love walk, now listen what I'm going to say, I think it determines a level of anointing that can be released in our life. What is the anointing? The anointing is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. It's this thing that comes off of us, <laughs> that attracts people to us. I had something happen a few weeks ago and I just thought it was hysterical. I saw this lady in some place where I was getting my nails done and she was there with two or three other ladies and they all recognized me and got excited because they see me on TV and you know they so this lady's trying she's trying to explain and she says she said I, I just love the this she said there's this this thing that this she said, just the way you present, you're, you're like so powerful. And there's this, and she just kept going, there's this, you know. <laughs> and I loved it because what she was saying was, I feel the Holy Spirit coming off of your life. But she didn't know what it was. 
And so I have a new thing. It's And I tell you what, you should, you should have that when you go in your office. When you walk around the neighborhood, this influence, this, this power emanating from you, this love, this fruit of the Spirit, amen? I call it Holy Ghost oomph. But I'll never forget that lady. She made my day. I thought, praise God, even people who don't know what it is can feel it. But listen to this. If I was fighting with my husband, mad at about 12 people, hanging on the phone last night gossiping, got up this morning, watched soap operas, didn't spend any time with God, and then met that lady, she wouldn't have had much to say to me. Are you hearing me? What is the anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life worth to you? You say, well, wait a minute. I thought everything was a free gift. <laughs> you know what? Our salvation is a free gift. Christ died for us. Forgiveness is a free gift. But if you want to really walk in the power of God, there is going to be a price that you're going to pay for it. <laughs> you see, you ain't clapping very loud. Do you think that the power that is in the name of Jesus costs Jesus anything to get that? Well, if you don't, hang around till tomorrow. We'll talk about that. Every day, numerous times every day, numerous times every day, we come up to situations where it would just be so easy to protect that gift on our life by just not going with the flesh. And this, listen, we can be forgiven for anything. God loves us. This is not about, I'm not talking about, you can't buy the love of God. The love of God is free. But this is my opinion. You can take it or leave it or do what you want to with it. I believe that this is our love response back to God. I think my thank you to God is saying, I am so flabbergasted by what you've done for me. That, that I want to do everything that I can to represent you. I want you to be proud of me. I want Jesus to be proud of the church. And I want him to be proud of us in our homes. I want him to say, look at them down there. Look at them down there representing me. Amen. And let me tell you something, this is not just for a handful of people that are preachers and on the pulpit. This is for every single individual in their everyday lives, wherever you're at, at school, at home, in your office, in the neighborhood, and in church. We need to represent Christ. The anointing of God is just... Well, I don't even know how to tell you how amazing it is. We need to do everything that we can to protect that. You are anointed. People are not just anointed to preach. You're anointed to be a parent. Today I hear so many young mothers that are fearful that they're not going to be good parents. You need to parent with confidence. You don't need to be afraid that you can't parent. 
I mean, I was raised like an idiot. I didn't have any kind of a good example around me at all. I mean, you talk about dysfunction. I mean, I had the word going in my life before anybody even used it. <laughs> my dad was an abuser. My mother had mental problems and she was petrified of him. And so she didn't do anything except just live in fear all the time. I mean, the atmosphere I lived in was totally insane. And so if anybody should have not been able to parent, it would have been me. When I brought my first son home, I didn't even know what to do with him. I didn't have any money. My husband ran off and left me when I was pregnant. I went through a clinic. I had a different doctor every time that, that I went to this clinic. I gained a half a pound the whole time I was pregnant because I was losing weight the whole time from all the stress in my life. When I walked out of the hospital with this baby, I was basically homeless. I didn't have anywhere to go. Yeah. And look what God's done. Amen. Come on. Amen. And I took that little guy home that I named David, and that wasn't my husband's name. But God had a plan. Amen. Because he ran around on me and ended up going to prison, you know, all kinds of stuff. But the bottom line is, is, you know what? I wasn't a perfect parent. And in my early years, I did more screaming and yelling than I should have. And that wasn't, you know, a great thing. But you know what? All four of my kids are serving God. They all love God. Two of them work in the ministry. We're all great friends. And so my point is, is I was anointed to raise those kids. And if you've got kids, they come with an anointing for you to raise them if you'll listen to it and learn how to be led and guided by it. Come on. So we need to protect this wonderful anointing that's in our life. I wanna encourage you today to let go of all bitterness, resentment, anger, animosity. Don't live in your homes and quarrel and bicker and fight and argue and make a big deal out of stuff that nobody cares about anyway. You have the power of the Holy Ghost to just zip your lip and not say one more word. If, you, if, if it's necessary, then do it. But I'm not suggesting you just lay down and become a doormat for everybody to walk all over and just walk around your house like a, house like a little mouse all the time and say nothing. But if you're going to roar, make sure you're roaring about something that's worth roaring about. Amen? Now, the Bible is full of teaching about walking in love. I mean, just full, 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 full of teaching about walking in love. No man has at any time seen God. Or beloved, verse 11, beloved, if God loved us so very much, we ought also to love one another. Verse 12, no man has at any time yet seen God. But if we love one another, God abides, lives and remains in us, and his love that love, which is essentially his, is brought to completion to full maturity, runs its full course, and is perfected in us. Now, here's what I got from God about 15 years ago. I don't need to sit in my house and try to feel God. God, are you here? Ooh. But I tell you, when, when I'm out helping somebody, there's God. Say, well, I'm here trying to help you. I never feel God's presence any greater than when I'm preaching. Why? Because I'm getting to help people. The power of God will be released in your life in a greater way when you start doing something with it that makes a difference and matters. Do you know the Bible says that we can grieve the Holy Spirit? We can even quench the Spirit in our lives by not walking in love. We need to learn how to protect the anointing on our life, and that anointing is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells with us. We need to learn how to not live in strife and to be quick to forgive and not be angry and be careful what we say and a lot of things, and I'm grateful that God is always teaching us. It's exciting to me. And he teaches us by using the Word of God.
I want you to meet my buddy Angela. She is seven years old. She's very, very ticklish. We've been able to make an impact in Angela and her family's life after a very devastating loss. You see, we're here in Zambia and water is a huge need here. Even though we are right along the banks of the Zambezi River where you think water would be plentiful, but that water is extremely dangerous. And Angela lost one of her sisters to a crocodile along the river as they were gathering water. If you can even imagine such a loss as a parent, as a sister, to lose someone that you love in such a terrible way. This is the biggest river in Zambia. So there were a lot of problems. There are a lot of crocodiles in the river. There are a lot of hippos in the river. The most affected are people, their children. Uh, I lost my daughter, caught by the crocodile. I sent her to go and fetch water. How old was she? Ten years. Ten years old? Yes. Every time we, uh, we fetch water from that side, we, di we drink it direct without uh, putting any chemical in it. As you can see, this is, these are just villages. They don't have uh, money to buy chlorine or any chemical to purify water. So uh, we had uh, uh, diseases like uh, dysentery, diarrhea, uh, waterborne diseases. We were crying for clean water. How many people would you say were, were sick from waterborne illness during that time? There were many. If you, even if you go to the clinic there, they will give you the number. The people were suffering from this diarrhea and so forth. <laughs> now we are happy. We are drinking clean water. We are living a better life now. Now we are getting good water, safe water. Yes, even crocodiles are no more accident for crocodiles. We thank you very much for what you are doing. And people are healthier? Yes, very much. This ball which is set here, is not from, uh, from you. It's not from hand of opal itself, but it's from God himself. So they thank, they thank God for bringing hand of hope to bring all that support all the way to here. It is safe, madam. We are happy on that. And all the people now are very happy. Praise to God. God loves us. Thank you. Edith and her three girls are gathering water, they don't have to be in fear. They don't have to be in fear of the dangers of the river, of the animals, of the disease that the water carries. And we are so grateful that you have been right here with us to provide this for them. It's through your love for Christ and it's in sharing that love with Edith, her girls, and the entire village in this area that you are changing the world one little bit at a time. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash partner.